Hey everyone, it's Nash from Astronomy. With Milky Way season coming by, I thought it'd be a really good time to go over how you can stack images of the Milky Way using an application called Sequitur. I'll be using most of the default settings in Sequitur. I'll briefly go over what each of the options are, but the idea in this video is to just use Sequitur to stack all my images, uh, make sure that the noise is as, as low as possible at a sequitur and then we'll do some post-processing in Photoshop. You can also do the Photoshop piece in GIMP. Sequitur does have a lot of great options such as uh, like auto brightness and HDR mode output which I won't be doing in this video but I do encourage you to just play with it, click it, you know, do uh, once you have the default settings working, just play with each of the settings and see what you what your output looks like. Uh, for I've been using Sequitur for a few years and I usually just use the default settings and then go into Photoshop and do my post processing there. So once you're on this website, uh, you can click on download and get the latest version here. I am using 1.6.0, uh, which came out a couple years ago. 1.6.1 was released earlier in 2023. I didn't upgrade because the only update is that it's supporting more new cameras, which I don't have. You can also go to the manual and it gives you a very nice introduction and very nice explanation as to what each of the different settings are, which the, each of the different options are in Sequitur. And if you have any questions, this is the best place to go. But if you have any questions you can't find the answers to here, ask in the comment below and I will uh, happily answer them. You can also look at the samples here just to see what it looks like. So these are some really great examples that uh, that you can use as inspiration for your images. So with that said, let's take a look at the images that I'm going to stack. So these are images that I took last summer. So if I click on one of these, you can see the camera settings. So the camera I used is my Canon T5i. Um, just a stock DSLR. This one is not Astro modified or anything. I used ISO 3200. The f-stop was zero, but I used my Samyang 14 millimeter wide angle lens, which is a manual lens. So it doesn't do any kind of auto focusing or auto f-stop adjustments. So it'll always say f zero, but I think I was doing it at f uh, 2.8 or 3.2. I don't quite remember. The exposure time was 30 seconds. I have a bug in my Canon T5i that doesn't go to, to the whole numbers for some reason. So it stopped at 29.9 seconds. Doesn't matter. I have 20, 15, eight of these. So it's about 29 minutes of the Milky Way galaxy and it's more than enough to get something uh, amazing out of this. Uh, and you can see that in this directory, I do have some examples that I stacked earlier. So if you look at one of these, so this is what one shot looked like. You can see that there's not a lot of light pollution. It's a 30 second image. We have uh, the cabin where we stayed here. You can see some fireflies here and the Milky Way is clearly visible. You can see a little bit of the row of Fuji complex. I'm going to try and tease it out a little bit more when I edit it in Photoshop. And if I scroll in, you can see that my 30 seconds was probably too long. In the future, when I try it again, I'll probably try and do uh, 15 seconds uh, try and, to try and decrease the amount of star trails that I have here. It'll be halved. Uh, if you're using a star tracker, then you can go longer uh, if you have it properly polar aligned. So this is what it looks like. So I think this will be a really good output out of sequitur. So close this. I have Sequitur open here. It is a pretty simple UI. So the first thing we're going to look at are the top uh, left options here. Um, you can click on the project, you can do new project, you can open a project, save project. So it's one of the things that I like about Sequitur is it can save them and come back later. Uh, in, even an application like AstroPixel processor, they don't allow you to save sessions for some reason. So you can just click on new project and it'll just, if you have something there, it'll just, uh, uh, open a blank slate for you. There are a few options here. Some of them are highlighted in red uh, circles here. That means that they're required. So you need star images. Uh, in other astrophotography speak, star images are your light frames. So this is what all my CR2 files would be. The base image is the reference image. In a lot of the other applications, they'll do like star analysis and pick the best referenced reference frame uh, that every other image gets stacked into. Uh, in Sequitur, it'll actually choose like the middle options or as close to the middle as possible if you have an even number of images. So it'll select it automatically, but we can select our own um, after we uh, import everything. So noise images are, again, your 
a separate name for the for it is the dark images. So if you take darks, I didn't take any darks, so I won't be using them. Uh, they're not required. Vignetting are your flats. Again, I didn't take any flats, but it, I'm sure it would help be it would be helpful um, if you were stacking uh, like longer focal length exposure. Uh, I don't take vignetting images or flats for wide angle shots of the Milky Way because uh, I don't think I get any vignetting anyway. Uh, it's just just so wide. And the output is just, you know, you'll click on it and give it an output file name. So star images. So you can double click on this and open the options. Or you can open your folder, you know, I can select all except for that and then click and drag it in. And once you're here, it gives you an option to select the category of the file. So you have star noise and vignetting. So I click on star, click OK. And within a few seconds, it should load the 58 files. And you'll see that it automatically selected image 2558 as the base image. If you look here, 2558 is like the middle option here. Uh, and because it has an airplane here, I'm not going to use it. So I'm going to just look at some of these and uh, I'm not going to use 2559 either. More planes here. Plane, plane. And I think 2562 is a really good one. Um, yeah, so that's what I'll use. So I'll go back to sequitur, double click on this, and then 2562 is going to be my new base image. There you go. So that's what it looks like. Uh, we'll need to select an output image. So I'm going to put it here and I'll name it Milky Way dot tiff. Uh, and that's all you have to do on the top uh, left hand portion of sequitur. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to composition and we're going to make sure we're going to make some edits here. So the first edit we're going to do is um, so if you look at the computing options, uh, it's doing accumulation. So before we get to that, let's go to composition. You can do align stars or star trails. I'm not going to do star trails. I use another software for that. So we'll just do align stars so that it can stack them based on the stars that it sees here. So we have competing options. Accumulation is it just keeps adding onto them. But we're going to do something called freeze ground and make sure that selective is selected so that it removes aircrafts, meteors, and other it says other unstable objects in the sky so that we only have the Milky Way and not planes and stuff. So once you click on freeze ground, you'll notice that the sky region here became red. That means that became required. So if I click on this, uh, we have three different options that we can select. So the boundary line is the simplest one. So if you click on this and if you uh, hover, if you click left click and then hover over uh, the image here, you can see it has a line. So if you're somewhere where you have a flat horizon, this will be perfect. You know, it makes it easy. You know, you have the sky somewhere and then the ground somewhere else. If you do gradient, it's similar, except you can, it has two lines and you can make it a gradient. So it's like a softer, uh, softer edges here. Uh, I won't use that because I have trees here. So we're going to use irregular mask where we can paint the sky portion. Uh, it also, rec I'd also recommend clicking on auxiliary highlight. And what that does is, so once that's selected, you click anywhere here. So sequitur does some work to identify where the ground is and where the sky is to try and help you. So it does kind of highlight the stars here. So what you can do is with your mouse, you left click and you can click and drag and just paint over the sky and you can see that it turns green. You can use your mouse scroller to make the, the selective circle bigger or smaller. So you can get a more precise selections in the middle. And if for some reason you make a mistake and let's say you selected the brown, what you can do is you can right click and it'll erase it. So right click and drag so it'll erase it and turn it back to red. And one good thing about sequitur is that you don't have to be perfect if you're just close enough. So I'll just stop here and this is more than good. Auto brightness you can turn on if you want when what this will do is it'll make the brightness look a lot brighter. Uh, I like doing this in Photoshop um, because I have more control over the brightness settings and I normally use curves instead uh, of like the brightness settings. So I'm going to leave that turned off. HDR is great if you have multiple exposures of multiple um, exposure levels of whatever you're, whatever you're stacking. It doesn't have to be Milky Way. It can be a deep space object as well. I will keep that off. 
and you remove dynamic noises, it may be helpful if you don't have darks. And what this will do is it'll try and determine which of these pixels, uh, as it analyzes frame by frame, which of these pixels could be a hot pixel coming from your camera instead of uh, a star in the sky. So that might be helpful. Uh, more often than not, I've noticed that it doesn't really do anything for wide angle shots anyway. Reduce distortion effects. So this is for uh, lenses that may have may have like stretched stars around the edges. By default, you know, it's set to auto, but it's actually off. So if you double click this, you can turn it back on and tele is for telescope or it can be like a, a complex, but I'll just double click it twice and just turn it off. You can do reduced light pollution. Sequitur will try and do its best to remove background light pollution. I am going to leave that off because as you can see, I was in a really dark area. Uh, I didn't have any light pollution to the east in where I was looking. You can do enhanced starlight. Uh, what I think this does is it actually makes some of the stars look brighter. Uh, in my Milky Way shots, I find that it it's not the best at making them look nice. Um, so I usually have that turned off and if I need to make my stars brighter, I'll do it in Photoshop and I usually use, uh, again, curves. The merge four pixels is I think it's just the RGGB matrix, so I'll just leave that alone. We're not doing a time lapse and the color space is sRGB as the default. So once we're here, we'll click on start and it'll analyze and go through each of the images and stack them on top of one another. And normally takes just a few minutes to do, so we'll skip four minutes or so to the end of this. All right, that took about seven and a half minutes to complete. Uh, I did all the things I wanted it to do. So I'm gonna close this and it should load the final output image here. So this is what it looks like. Uh, it doesn't look that much different, but once you zoom in, it should look a little bit more different. Um, on the top here, you have the result here. So if you have your TIFF files opening with the default software, it'll open. You can also just go into wherever this is and open it from there. So for me, it's in the same directory where um, I have all my raw files. So this is what it looks like. If you zoom in, you can see that um, you know the star stretches are still there, but it's a lot less noisy. If I open up another random one here and zoom in, in the similar area, you can see that it's 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 a uh, it's much more noisy. So if I just uh, tab in and out of both of them, you can see that the stacked image is much, much better uh, in terms of noise. So it looks a little bit darker, but we're going to fix that in Photoshop. So let's do that next. Uh, and what I usually like doing is I'll duplicate the layer. And then I'll hide this one so that if, uh, if anything happens, I can just get rid of it and then go back to the background layer. So, all right, so the first thing we can do is just just do stuff to the sky so we can do a select we can do select sky so there you go so it selected the sky uh and then what we can do is we can do Control j and it opens the sky in another different layer so if i uncheck this so you can see that it selected the sky you know it got rid of some of this but you know whatever um doesn't matter do this so what you can do is you can do layer um, or image adjustments, curves, you can do control M if you want, bring this over. So there are two bumps here. So I think this bump is, so if I use this little pen tool here, yeah, so the little bump is going to be here. So the, uh, since we're just doing it on this layer, uh, it's, that's not going to get affected anyway. So it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to do a little S curve here. Okay, great. I'm going to do another one. So curves. Look at that. You can start seeing a bunch of the nebulae here. It's looking great. Lots of color fringing here, but we can fix that. S curve. Oh, don't want to do too much. And what you can do is you can do image uh, and then adjustments. You can do levels. It's always on the other side. And we can move up the black point a little bit. 
go to the histogram here, you can see what's happening. There we go. Move the black point. This is the midpoint. So there we go. Click OK. I think this is the Lagoon Nebula. Again, you can see like there's some trailing here, uh, and that's my fault for using 30 second exposures untracked. So, um, and and what's nice is that you can actually, if, if you zoom out a little, you can actually see the row of Uchi complex here. Uh, you can see the dark uh, clouds here, and it's starting to pop. So it looks looks pretty good. Of course, there's some like color fringing uh, on some of the stars here, but I think that's fine. It's just showing the stars here. So this looks pretty good. It's um, You can play with the curves and levels and make sure uh, and even it out a little bit more. So again, this was just as an example to show that you can take uh, even with just a few minutes of Milky Way, you can get something pretty nice. Uh, you know, the background is straight. The trees are pretty visible. My cabin here is pretty visible. You know, I say my cabin, but you know, it's just a rental. Um, a couple of other things we can do is if you do Control Shift N E, oops, Control Shift Alt N E, it merges the visible layers. It creates a new layer. So this is what we have. And then we can do filter, camera raw filter. Here it is. Uh, and then we can play around with some of the other stuff, uh, some of the other settings here. So you can play with the contrast a little bit. You know, it'll of course affect the whole image, not just the sky. Uh, if we do it that way, you can also do dehaze. So it kind of gets rid of some of the light pollution, but it also makes it look weird. So you don't want to do too much of that. See if you do do that, do just a tiny bit. You can play with the saturation and the vibrance, so you can get rid of it, make it more artsy. So like if you decrease the highlights, it'll uh, actually decrease the sky glow here. I think that's sky glow. Um, so you don't want to do too much of that. You can preview. There you go. It looks more even here. If you go into detail, if you zoom in, you can play with some of the noise reduction here. Let's see what that looks like. So this is going to be too much. You can see the the cabin just gets really ugly. Just do a tiny bit. I'm gonna get rid of some of the color fringing, uh, like these blue. So you can click on the optics and defringe, do sample fringe, and then just select like one of these blues. So and now, if I zoom back out, so this is what it looks like. So it looks a lot of the 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 very bright blues kind of just disappeared or get they get muted a little bit. So if I uncheck, you can see it looks less purple, more colorfully. So you can see the role of Uchi complex. See the orange, yellow, etc. That is all I'm going to do here. I'm going to click OK. There we go. So this is what it looks like. So if you want to see what it looked like before, uncheck layer one and background copy. There you go. So I think that looks pretty good. If I were to do this again, which I'm hoping to do this summer uh, in a similar area, this was in the Catskills in upstate New York, I'm going to use different settings, uh, same equipment, and then I'll make create a video on how I did that and then we can do the whole process all over again but in the meantime if you have any questions on sequitur or photoshop or milky way or settings at all ask in the comments below I'm more than happy to answer them so until next time clear skies